welcome to this tutorial on how to use the extrudalizer to create this interesting animation of a 3D cellular phone and how you can shake it and make all the icons fall out. To begin, we will import our artwork that we have already prepared into your After Effects pre-composition and extrudalize it. Then we should move the extrudalized layer in such a way so that the pivot or the anchor point is at the bottom center of the phone. So when we shake it, it moves from side to side based on that anchor point rather than the one in the center. When animating the rotation, I suggest using both the orbit controls to rotate the phone on its y-axis and then add some pitch and roll in order to make the animation a little more interesting. Use the graph editor to make the animation rotation curves a little smoother and more natural. Animate the shake of the phone on the Z axis. To save some time, use your initial rotation keyframes and paste them at the end of the animation, but time reverse them so they loop. Adding a slight animation on the Y axis so the phone bobs up and down, making it look like it's floating in the air makes it seem a little more natural in my opinion. Creating a drop shadow can get a little bit tricky since we need to use a radial gradient and we also need to compress it, making it not really circular but oval. And this is the reason why I chose to use an extrudalized shape plus a mapped artwork layer. To give us the ability to make radial gradient oval, we need to make it part of a group and then control the scale of that group. In order to sync the rotation of the shadow with the rotation of the phone, I'm going to parent the Y rotation of the phone to the roll of the shape layer, but I'm going to reverse the value. When the phone bobs up and down, we really need to work on its drop shadow. So when the phone bobs up, the shadow grows, but becomes more transparent and reverses when the phone goes down. Another neat trick is to use the highlight length and highlight angle of the radial gradient to simulate the shadow moving from side to side when the phone rotates and shakes. Again, in an effort to save the size of your ending Lottie animation down the line, one of the solutions, instead of using a separate extrudalized layer for each button, is to use one button and timer mapping. To set it up, let's import just one button square and then all the icons for each of the buttons. I'll create a simple two second animation for the button as it's going to bounce from side to side when the phone shakes. Now I will add a single artwork mapped layer for the front of the button and then I'm going to paste icon artwork for each of the icons into one artwork wrapper. To make it easier down the line, I'm going to create split markers and give each of those markers the name of one of the icons so that I will know for later in time remapping which segment I want to use. Then I will use hold opacity keyframes to make sure that named icon is visible during the time segment indicated by the marker.
I'll also copy paste rotation keyframes so that they're contained in the exact same place for each segment indicated by each marker. In the continuous effort to keep the lot size down, I'm going to optimize the button animation to remove all the unused vector groups and expressions. Now for the tricky part. We need to animate all bouncing and falling of the buttons on the phone when it shakes. You can try and animate those manually and that's perfectly fine. Or you can use a tools like Newton 3 or Physics Now to help you get that physics motion down. And if you do use one of those tools, you can simplify the frame by frame animation using the built in After Effects smoother tool. After I've animated all the button falling actions, I'm going to import the icons layer. I'm going to enable time remapping and I'm going to put a time remapping keyframe at the beginning and end of each marked segment. Then I will duplicate that layer additional 15 more times so that I will have a separate icons layer for each one of the icons. And then I will make sure that I will have only one segment present on each one of the layers with only one set of time remapping keyframes. This type of approach allows you to save a lot of space in the final Lottie because instead of rendering 16 different layers, it renders one layer and then creates 16 instances. Another tip to speed up your animation process when you're using time remapping and heavy compositions is to pre-render the layer you're planning to time remap and use the resulting video as a proxy. I will spend some more time fine-tuning the physics of the buttons falling as well as time remapping for each button so they don't look absolutely in sync and each one of them has their own individual rotation and bounce. After I'm happy with the animation, I'm going to take the icons layers and uh, copy and paste them into the main composition with the phone and sync them with the beginning of the shake keyframes. And uh, additionally, I'm going to make sure that they're following along with the phone's bounce on Y axis. One important step that you need to do is you need to create vector still of the icons in the down position when they all fell down. So in order to do this, you can export the lotty with all the icons falling down and then export the last frame as an SVG using the take snapshot function in the body moving player. Then you can import that SVG into Illustrator and break it down, making it simpler. This way you can use that as a substitution frame for when the phone turns back. Once you have all your artwork prepared, meaning the icons in the up position, the phone bezel, the back of the phone, the icons in the down position, import them into your main composition and then create map artwork layers for the back and the front and then get to placing all the artwork into the relevant artwork wrapper groups and making sure that they're positioned correctly using the origin path as the template for your positioning. Creating the wallpaper for the phone is a fun little trick I learned using Polystar and a repeater which can create very interesting and fun combinations which are very very small once exported into a lottie. Basically if you just export the wallpaper it will be 2-3 kilobyte lottie size. Most of the artwork will be positioned in the front. You will need to have the icons in the up position, the icons in the down position. You will need to have the phone bezel and then you'll create a wallpaper and all of it needs to be toggled using opacity hold keyframes at relevant times. So you will need to toggle between the icons in the artwork layer and the icons that you have imported for falling down during the shake. Then you'll need to toggle back the artwork with the icon down position. So then you can spin the phone back and return it to the original state. And that's it. Export to Lottie and you're done. Below you can download an example of what the Lottie would look like. And um, thank you for watching. Please contact me if you have any ideas for a tutorial or if there is something you want to see in the next one.